and welcome to our first annual, or ever, I guess, debate on artificial intelligence and art. Uh, this conversation was prompted by many, many different back and forths that we had uh, among the Consumer Choice Center team about the future of these new AI art generators, what it means for artists, for graphic designers, for the creative sector, and also intellectual property. We've seen a number of articles questioning where some of the art come from, comes from on a lot of this. We know that many of the different developers of these new platforms, including Mid Journey or Dali or many others that some others in the audience might be familiar with. And we've noticed that there's a lot of art that is being reused or repurposed, uh, things that are being searched online and scraped from the internet and being used in art. So what is the IP stance on AI-generated art? Is it something that supports artists? Is it something that goes against intellectual property law? Uh, so we're going to have a nice conversation with our colleagues here. We'll start the, start the round table. Uh, we'll start with, uh, with Bill, here, host of the Consumer Podcast. Uh, thanks, Yael, and thanks for hosting this. I think it's very important that we have this conversation to give people some perspective on this, because some of the listeners might not have heard uh, about the implications of AI art, might have seen it on Twitter, might have seen it on Instagram, might have stumbled upon something in the last few weeks that they thought was created by an artist, was was what was actually made um, by artificial intelligence. Um, but uh, what is the background on this? I think it's very in, in interesting. So uh, for all the consumer podcast listeners, you've heard me before. I'm the host of the consumer podcast, Bill Words. I'm a senior policy analyst at the Consumer Choice Center. And uh, and yeah, so we, we're just going to do a, a roundtable discussion here. Um, my bottom line is that I'm a bit skeptical on um, on what we can, uh, on how much we should be able to use these uh, these creations as a content creator to some extent myself. I've done a, a broadcast radio. I've done a, a podcast. I've done a, a, all the, 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 the journalism where you go into the field and research and then later uh, you see your texts appear here and there uh, being used with sometimes other people's affiliations so i've experienced some of that myself as a content creator where i feel um it's uh, it's important to sort of distinguish um who has ownership so i think it's super important we have this conversation cool let's just go down the list here uh we'll we'll go down uh, our participants here at the table and we'll start with elena if you could just give us a little bit of name, uh, background for our listeners, and then uh, we'll go through the list. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. So my name is Elena, and I'm a graphic designer. Um, mostly I'm working uh, with um, apps like uh, Illustrator and Photoshop, but uh, like uh, I'm also connected with art because I, I, as, that's as my hobby. I like uh, painting, and uh, also I uh, um, use the... Uh, French um, iPad, like uh, I'm painting also um, in uh, um, like in, in this way, electronic way. So yes, that's mostly my background. <laughs> anyway, and that's how I'm connected with um, art, mostly. All right, then we got Goga and Luca on the line. You guys take it away. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, so this is Luca. Um, to give a bit of a background, I'm. Uh, a self-taught graphic designer uh, in this industry for about five years now, uh, kicking off things with freelancing, currently working with the CCC as a senior designer. Um, uh, as soon as the mid-journey came out, uh, I won't say that I've been an active participant of it uh, from the early days of the conception all the way to today. Uh, and. Um, I think it's a perfect opportunity today to this, to open up the discussion to wider audience, uh, both in terms of the ethical part of the AI generated art, as well as what it means from the industry as a whole. Uh, because I believe uh, person, my personal stance on this would be that this is the industrial revolution of a sort finally coming into the artist field, art field as such. Uh, so yeah, it's not too uh, it's not too uh, surprising that artists are. Well, the art industry as a whole is a bit of a mayhem. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to discuss it with you guys and see where we land after today's conversation. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Gogin, uh, and I'm a, a bachelor uh, of the Tbilisi of Academy of Arts. Uh, I finished in animation. I was like painting from my childhood. I was always in the visual field um, and I was very kind of a happy adapter of any type of um, 
advancements in technology that was helping my creative output. Um, it was Photoshop or a digital uh, drawing pad or, I don't know, iPad or anything that was like uh, interesting. Um, um, and I don't know, I was always excited to the new technology, but I think um, current um, development in AI kind of scares a uh, little bit. Um, in the way that I think non other technologies had the same influence over human output and human, I would say it like that is the utilitarian um, uh, workflow that is like that is better to be removed in everyday life. And art is not like utilitarian kind of workflow. It's like it's something that I'm pretty enjoying doing, and there is a lot of artists who are enjoying doing arts and. I think that is like um, something a little bit scary about like removing this uh, uh, kind of um, very joyful uh, activity from a lot of people. And I don't know what type of influence that might it will have in maybe 10 years or 15 years, because I think art was like always part of the human culture that was creating huge value, not for um, individual level, but like on the societal level, uh, in movies, in philosophy, in theater, in opera, like it was like part of the kind of huge um, artistic expression. And now it's kind of getting to the point that like, we don't know what's, what's gonna be the future. So I'm curious and happy to have this conversation with you guys. All right. Well, then we have our first kind of point of contention here. And then um, I know we had talked about it over the last several days, and I did just drop a, uh, a brand new AI generated art in the, uh, the Slack to you guys that we might use as a cover if, uh, if we approve, or perhaps if uh, Gogi or others can convince us otherwise, we will stop using this technology. <laughs> uh, there's two, two articles I wanted to mention. There's at least one uh, that I believe is all the way back from the spring. Uh, this has to do with the U.S. Copyright Office back in March. Um, it had actually ruled that an image generated through artificial intelligence using these tools that we've mentioned actually lacked the, quote, human authorship necessary for protection. So it's at least bringing us to um, something interesting in this field is what it means for intellectual property. And then there's a, a sort of second one that I had shared, and it's an interview with the founder of Mid Journey AI, which is another tool. And uh, he, uh, he is asked, did you seek consent from living artists or work still under copyright? Meaning for a lot of the images that are sourced, he says, no, there really isn't in a way to get 100 million images and know where they're coming from. It'd be cool if images had metadata embedded in them about the copyright owner or something. That's not a thing. There's not a registry and there's no way to find a picture on the internet and then automatically trace it to an owner and then have any way of doing it to authenticate it. Okay, nice little, <laughs> nice little start. All right, so uh, Elena, since we started with you, I know you have um, a background also in, in more creative artistry, if we were to call that. Um, and I know that, you know, there's a lot of different topics that come up here when it comes to if people are able to use your work. I mean, how, if you, someone generated a piece of AI art and uh, one of your paintings ended up in there, how would that kind of make you feel? We'll start with that. That's kind of problem that um, this only technology that takes someone's work and make its own based on others' art. And there is funny thing that I know that uh, there is a picture that even has a, a sign of uh, this uh, art that was still part, like this part of art was still from this uh, another artist with it, its own sign. So it's kind of obvious that they're stealing your art and making new one based on others' art. But there is a thing that may more you teach this um, AI, more it's go gonna give you, more uh, unique it's gonna be. But at the same time, if uh, for example, it's like, a, I think it's more like a, you're teaching a, a kid to draw, you're giving it a skill, you're giving it like, a, um, Mm, you're giving it how it's gonna be, how it's uh, how it uh, works, 
and uh, uh, if you uh, if you will pay for these artists uh, for using them art to use it in a like new creature of uh, new creative um, objects of AI, it got it can work honestly. I think uh, if uh, the artists that uh, they use in art of them, uh, if they're gonna be paid, it can work. Otherwise, it's just they just steal in your work. That's it. Okay, wow. Any reaction to that, uh, Bill? Um, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> so it's complicated, right? Because uh, ultimately, we talk about to what extent uh, does commercialization create a conflict in, in intellectual property? Um, it seems clear to me that if you use it, for instance, for training purposes, right, if you're trying to develop your AI, uh, if you're trying to teach people about the, the functionality of it, and you use that, maybe to um, just to display it, right? If I'm a journalist and I, and I show an AI tool on screen on a TV uh, to show what it can do, of course, that to me wouldn't violate intellectual property because um, I'm just displaying, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about it, I'm, I'm providing information and I'm, uh, uh, and, I, and I'm showing it. However, if I'm trying to sell AI art and trying to commercialize it, but it lives off the work of someone else, then it becomes complicated. And I guess this goes back to the whole conversation we had for, it took a long time until the YouTube creators were actually able to sort of identify what is the fair use of music? Um, what is uh, What can be used for satire? What can be used to uh, remix music? If you remix it, it's fine. But if, uh, if you just use it to uh, under your under your um, uh, YouTube uh, video creation, uh, then it will be, will be copyright strike. That was a long conversation for a long time. I remember that in Germany, um, uh, most YouTube videos were actually not available for a very long time because of this intellectual property uh, dispute. And ultimately, this even goes back to the whole conversation on how Spotify was able to sort of democratize the access to music and got us away from uh, 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 pirating uh, music. And now we just have a convenient way of going about this. Maybe somebody will come along, some Daniel Ek type person will come along and create uh, a system in which we can all use AI, but based on a based on a subscription. And then artists will have some sort of a pot that they can that they can that they can be paid out for. But I think ultimately. Um, um, this entire conversation should be about how do we maintain uh, artistic creation, uh, which is the same conversation we have in all other fields. Uh, we use intellectual property so that we give people incentives to create new things. If you can't generate any uh, revenue off of your creation, well, then ultimately what you end up with is both in tech and in music and art, you just have a lack of creators because there's no actual funding stream to live off of. Maybe people will eventually draw the distinction and say, okay, AI art doesn't really impress me because that's just a computer. I'll put way more monetary value on somebody who actually painted this for me. Maybe that will happen. But I think not right now we're in a situation where people just don't see the difference and might as well use something that they can get for free, uh, which is why, um, you know, for the consumer podcasts, uh, so far, you have not seen any AI generated art, but that's a that's a choice between our different podcast platforms. All right, so the pro and the anti is between the different uh, CCC podcasts and radio shows. Okay, I take it. There we go competition. So, um, Gogi, um, you know, when it comes to this, I know, I, have you tried the the different art generators? Is it something that you think is somewhat fascinating as someone who is more uh, tech-centric? Or do you also echo a lot of the sentiments of Bill? No, no, it's amazing. I would say like uh, the capacity on which these artificial um, generated images are working is like, it's very huge. It's like the thing is that like how like kind of um, how the how it gets to that point is the main concern, right? Like the bill had like conversation about the music industry like that is the dense ai um that is uh currently is like developing and that is huge um kind of they are getting this data of the music which is already copyrighted or um voluntary donated in this data set um so like what uh happened with the image ais happened that like uh, the scraped data that was used to generate the AI's capacity basically was never asked for. Um, so like uh, if there were uh, the option that like anyone could donate their artwork that like 
uh, or like in the end uh, of the result, like if someone generates the art and there is like my name, they're like, oh, this artwork generated by Luca is using Gogi's uh, arts uh, or like there was like very unethical ways to produce the level and like now they're like generating huge amount of money, right? Like this is uh, even if you take Mid Journey or OpenAI, you have to pay to generate art. It's not like it's not for free. Um, there is also, of course, the uh, AIs that you can download and work on it for free. But like the thing is, it's like these AIs are not um, ethically um, trained. That's the main problem. Uh, and I think it needs to have like some sort of um, like very uh, big kind of discussion um, in law or regulations that like how much like how we can do that like uh ethically uh what you were saying bill about like oh uh, as a company i would pay for someone uh i would pay um artists than the ai and that might well save the artist that's like very naive point of view and no uh, i think not like not a company in the future like companies in the future corporations they would definitely uh, not try to kind of sacrifice the time and the kind of, I don't know, a um, little bit um, hard. Uh, artists are like very hard to communicate with in general. Uh, and companies are not like willing to sacrifice their time and energy on like communicating with some like little bit uh, fight, like picky artists that like has like its own views about the world and like, uh, I'm pretty sure the AI that will produce much more, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, mass uh, appealing product that will be uh, uh, interesting for everyone that will be much more in demand. Um, the thing is like how these AIs will be trained and how ethically this AI will get the data. Um, so I might talk too long, but I don't know. Sorry, Luca. Uh, what do you think? Well, there's certainly a lot to unravel uh, in the in all in that little monologue of yours. Uh, well, I mean, look, uh, personally, <laughs> no, but you made a few great points. Um, just to touch upon the uh, subject of ethical uh, ethical approach of the AI generated art and as a whole, there's certainly a lot of gray area. Go um, well, this is certainly the gray area, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, right now, uh, something to keep in mind is that um, the entire industry is literally making baby steps right now. Right, we're just seeing the uh, initial versions of um, uh, AI generated art. Mid Journey is only on its fourth version. Um, uh, so, the event, man, uh, something to keep in mind is the impact already is so significant, and whatever will happen to it in the upcoming month. Uh, will need to be frameworked in uh, in terms of ethical approach and whatever connotation has it has for the future for the industry as a whole. Uh, well, just to touch on the technical part of things, uh, what we know is that um, AI these AI tools are trained using data sets. Uh, I did I did some research. So one of the biggest data sets right now is Lion Five B, which we know contains a lot of copyrighted materials. Uh, and we know that even though the initial concept of the uh, these data sets used for training was uh, for the Sorry, training purposes, you said copyrighted. Yes. So there, uh, from what it seems, Lion Five B does contain imagery that is copyrighted. That seems to be the case. Uh, however, the argument was that it's used for training purposes. However, we now know that. Uh, uh, a lot of these, uh, uh, a lot of the uh, AI generators are using subscription models to uh, generate profit. Um, uh, and the question overall is, uh, where do we stand in terms of ethical uh, um, ethical side of things uh, as artists ourselves? And uh, how do we want this to impact the progress of AI generated uh, art in general? Because, well. I, I do personally believe that AI generated art is uh, is going to be a massive bit a part of the future for the commercial side of things. I'm absolutely sure about that. Bill, just to touch upon your uh, point, uh, um, 
I do believe that majority of the corporate uh, commercial requests will fall on the AI-generated art, mainly because what really matters there is the end result. Um, Bottom line, we'll uh, definitely let's... like hop on it. Absolutely, I believe ninety percent of the commercial art yeah. will more, most likely, way more, yeah. uh, ninety-nine perhaps, will fall on the AI-generated art because, well, the to break down the process on the very top level, it's the brief, yeah. the execution, and the final results. Now, the um, commercial uh, uh, clients never really see the executive bid. What they see is the final result and. Uh, what the AI generate uh, AI generated uh, generators offer is the uh, final results in a matter of seconds. So for them, it's a perfect approach. They can generate an infinite amount of uh, more or less finalized product that they, they can pick, interact with, modify how they see it. Uh, and well, I mean, something that uh, I personally, as an artist, believe is that the clients rarely see the final product. Uh, they only start operating on it once they see some first draft. Uh, that's when they start to get visual ideas. And this is this used to be our job as artists to provide them with those initial drafts. Gogi, let you let me know if you agree or not. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, so, agree. yeah. Uh, the and thing is well, like, what, mm -hmm. sorry, uh, I wanted to ask no, no, like how, how often like the kind of what's your kind of perspective and imagination like if the client has like do you think that will be used as a reference that like client will send you the references generated by the AI then will ask you to like maybe try to do something similar and like make it more professional or make it like more uh interesting like do you think that will be the mm -hmm. kind of use case one of the use case of the AI generated art no, no, I think a big part of it will be cutting out the artists as a whole. Uh, I think these AI generators are sophisticated, sophisticated enough, even on these initial versions, to provide extremely sophisticated art, um, something that would potentially take artists uh, weeks to create. They can create it in a matter of seconds, they can refine it. Um, and um, yeah, for something that is uh, has le less to do with the art itself and is more commercial i think that um the ai generated art will suffice but well, more than suffice to be fair um so i think for a lot of commercial work be it so commercial illustrations the uh, agent uh, ai will replace artists entire entirely for concept artworks they will be and i also believe the ai will take the leading role in that um so yeah, I think well, uh, but I do, do also believe that well, as some someone who interacted with Midjourney for the past couple of months, I also believe that um, and it could be interpreted as a tool as such because the accuracy uh, and the quality of the product does depend on the way you interact with the prompts. Um, and I do believe that we already see emerging number of people who are sort of mastering their prompting capabilities on how to interact with the um with the with the ai better to create something much more sophisticated and much more refined and closer to what the imagination has at that hand so i think we well while art, well, certain uh, areas will be dominated by the ai we will also likely see emergence of a new i don't know let's call it an ai whisper <laughs> so so I would, you know, if, I may, if, I, if I may, if I guys, if I may, so um, uh, this is, I mean, to me, the, the, the fact that I'm expressing criticism is not because I necessarily want like a jobs protection program for artists. I mean, that's not necessarily yeah, what, yeah, what yeah, it is yeah, about. Yeah. I don't, I'm not one of those people that, uh, that doesn't use the automated checkout at the supermarket because I want to support the cashiers. This is, if it's a technological way to cut out time, that is one thing. But this is sort of about like, sort of what is this, what is the work based on? Let's assume, Luca, uh, you uh, in, uh, let's say let, let's say we are the year 2050 and you've become a rich investor maybe you become you 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 you, uh, you won the lottery and now you say oh you know what i'm going to go into pharmaceuticals now you invest into a research uh, agency that's going to research the cure for cancer and you developed this one pill but it had it was necessary for you to put 1.5 billion dollars into the research it's taken you uh, the last 20 years to do it 
And now suddenly uh, somebody develops a 3D AI 3D printer that reproduces um, that uh, that cure for cancer pill uh, within just a matter of seconds. Now, um, you maybe maybe we say, OK, well, the courts are going to determine that, uh, well, this is this is fair use. Uh, the computer was able to do it. No person was actually involved in, uh, in, in, in making and reproducing this pill. So tough luck. Yeah, you spend one point five billion and 20 years. And what are you going to do as a result? Well, I mean, you're not going to invest the same amount of money uh, into developing the cure for, I don't know, HIV, because, well, your investors, all your co-investors are going to tell you that's not worth it. It's just, it just doesn't make sense. And unless, I mean, I would, I would respect the argument if we said that the AI had the ability to find that cure itself, but it doesn't, it just reproduces something completely. If, if, if the AI art we see right now was creating the new expressionism, that's a completely different thing, but this is just, being very quick at copy pasting and mallying and, and mashing all together a bunch of work by other people, which to, is not create that's not creation. Uh, that is just a very quick copy paste tool to me. I see. Well, uh, so this veers it off into the sort of question of what art really is, right? Uh, um, one of the definitions of art is the expression or application of human creative skill. So the question is, does human really uh, play a part in there and what do we see art as such is it something that's created out of our mind entirely and this is completely original work or is it something that we get inspired by well now in the uh, in the field of design there's there are things called the mood boards where you know you get the brief and you collect a lot of other people's work or imagery or whatever to get inspired by uh, and um, uh, art itself is some, is the uh, in, uh, is something uh, that throughout the history has been, I believe, built upon. You know, we use the techniques made by the other uh, artists. We use um, <clears throat> um, we use the imagery uh, for, uh, that we get inspired by. Uh, question is, um, what but, does but, AI but, really one, one question? Yeah. Uh, when you are talking yeah, sure. inspiration and like copying something, if I'm gonna copy Absolutely. Monet yeah. or I'm gonna copy mm -hmm. Rembrandt. I own it mm -hmm. because like I took like huge dedication, experience, knowledge, and like time to get to the point of copying it. And when someone comes mm -hmm. and like copies my work in one second, does he or she owns it? That's the question, right? Like how mm -hmm. like how yeah, right of course, like... of course. And very quick on that, yeah, well, uh, uh, what I think is interesting here is you know, you're you're talking about the let's call it the analog art world right and how that's applied in the digital and one thing i wanted to bring up and i guess since we're you know a good uh, good 30 minutes in i'm allowed to do this but i was going to bring up the point of uh, nfts uh non-fungible tokens because the promise there uh, depending on you know whatever chain you're on uh, the promise there is also that the artist the person who originally creates the nft has embedded within the smart contract uh, their particular account number or ethereum address or whatever and essentially, the more that that thing is traded, they will always have this tiny percentage of this cut. And what we've seen with, you know, NFT, look, you can just hit copy and paste. This is the whole issue with uh, digital products is that it is so easy to replicate, to take a screenshot, to hit, you know, control C. So I, I'm just wondering if there are any, because we're, we're dealing with digital art now, you know, if we're talking about only digital art that's put together using things like Photoshop, you know, from the from the hands of our very talented artists here in this uh, conversation, um, does that also perhaps give a apprehension of this is something that we just can't stop because we don't have the tech to do so? Well, um, I have a, well, uh, in that regard, uh, I believe that the argument that the NFT can be just downloaded as a PNG also to a degree applies to the uh, analog art as well. I mean, who's, who's stopping me from printing out uh, Mona Lisa and just hanging up on my wall? Well, it's look very similar. It's going to be hanging on my wall. Uh, it's not the original, but well, if I'm happy with it, I'm happy with it. I believe the same argument applies to NFT. What NFTs really do is they, uh, to, they tie in the digital ownership of the original creation to the artist, but nobody's really stopping anyone from just copying and creating copies of it. But are they the original? Well, in a way, but not really. Uh, of course, the degree of interaction being something that was is physical, was created and is hanging up in the, in the museum is a bit different than whatever is on the uh, Google Drive of the original 
graphic designer, but still. Um, and the question of ownership, I believe, is a part of a bigger discussion. Uh, but I see that there's a lot of uh, similarities between those two. To quickly jump back to the uh, point that was raised by uh, Bill is that, well, uh, <clears throat> of course, there's a question of uh, the value of a creation of an art, right? Like how much time was spent on it? What was what were the ideas behind it? I, be I personally, I believe that art does require a human element in it. I believe that in order for art as such to have a valuation, uh, it does require a human uh, human thought, a human uh, input, and you know something that's created, even even if it's created with the um, uh, with the influence of ex like external pieces of art or um, inspiration, it still like has a value of its own. But when we come to the commercial part bit of things, what really matters really there is the final product and the and the speed. The art itself matters rarely in my experience. Go do let me know if you disagree. Uh, but Gogi is someone who worked with the uh, commercial clients as well. Uh, you might have a different uh, a different approach about this one, but my personal uh, view is that what really matters there is the speed of execution. And if they like the final product, well, they're happy with it. They don't really care. Sure, about, but like but, I had the clients uh, who just like there. give me a, as much time as possible, and they told me like just mm -hmm. do whatever you want. There was the music video, and like I came mm -hmm. up with my idea. They were like just do in your time frame, and like just we want your ideas. Uh, the main problem with that, like what you were talking, is that it's not about like commercial work. Uh, of course, like it will be taken over by AI. The thing is like the artists will lose their relevance in general because like it will be not necessary to uh, commission any artist because AI will generate like 10 times or like 20 times more interesting. Even the artists who are creators, they will be like just demoralized how good these AIs will become in the future. So it's not about like, like who will be better. Of course, like AI will be like 10 times, 20 times better. And it will produce like something. Sorry to jump in there, but what do you be... mean when you say, yeah, sorry, sorry to just cut in there, but you, when you say better, what do you mean better? Uh, more hypnotizing okay. work, like more like something that will be, everyone will be stunned. It's like, it's something that like, it's not uh, like right now, it's gathering the information from existing artworks, like right? from the either like taken picture or scanned images of the uh, kind of the uh, manual work or like digital work. But in the future, the data that will gather, uh, it will not be only the arts, it will be like some news, it will be economics, it will be like maybe the chat messages, right? And these AIs will be oh, like much more that. complicated, yeah. right? Like this will be something that will reflect the societal kind of individual and the societal kind of- I, um, I would also, things. yeah. Sorry. So go get, so, sorry, to, I, I also wanted to say like, it, we, we do have the obligation to sometimes to, to program in some other consideration than just um, like, what is the end result? Like I understand Lucas perspective and how some companies will view this, but I mean, uh, if you had, if you had AI programmed a, a building, building bot, um, and it would be like Soviet bot, then yes, it would have built, I mean, essentially that's what the Soviet Union did as well, is like essentially build the same apartment for everyone and then all of our cities look terrible. Uh, if I have an AI generated drone and I programmed, and, and all, all I tell the drone is like maximize my profit and nothing else, it will just fly to different houses and steal everybody's money and bring it back because that's all it had to do. So there's a bit more than just creating artwork that we need to consider uh, here there's there's, there's 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 rules and contracts and there's other individuals sure. to uh that, that go into the equation here um when when you look through a database and and, and take other other people's work. Well, to, to your point bill to your point bill we also agents. see the the so. chat bots that are being developed and uh, considering you and i um are writers um you know is that something yeah. that you feel threatened by as well or will it really come down to the output and how that's judged is are you going to have an an AI that's as capable as writing machine bill viets? 
Um, I, do I feel threatened? Uh, I mean, from what I've seen, not really, because what it does right now, it goes, it, it goes through Google. It doesn't write very, I mean, it's still very noticeable how it's not really a human being. Like I, I can still, I mean, you can probably write up like a website description, um, but can you write like a snappy op-ed? I don't think uh, AI will be able to exactly do that because humor is on a level that goes way beyond uh, sort of descriptive functions. Um, we'll Maybe see. Right now. We'll, we'll, uh, maybe, maybe yeah, that's true, Gogi. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe right now. Maybe right now. Um, ultimately, what it also does right now, and I think we, I've, I've discovered that with asking these chatbots a few questions to solve like common social problems, it tends to be very heavy on the regulatory side because it all all it does it goes through Google and finds all the solutions that people have previously written about it, and it becomes a quite a left wing regulatory heavy handed kind of bot. And that's not because it's. No, that's not because AI thinks that the government is the solution to everything. It's because the AI just uses all the texts that have been previously written. So as long as I'm in the minority, I think I'll be fine. I kind of think it's um, an interesting topic to think about, that uh, there is two opinions, that uh, AI can replace human art completely, and other topic that it's can, it never can be replaced because uh, it's more, uh, human art is mostly about emotions. I think that's how it's created. It's not only database, it's not only program that can use it. But I really like the expression of Gogi <laughs> that uh, artists are complicated people. It's not so easy to talk to them. Uh, but uh, there are two kind of people like artists and uh, developers that are not easygoing people. <laughs> it's it's kind of difficult to find common language with them. But at the same time, I agree with um, Luca Commercial art is completely different from, let's say, intuitive art from uh, uh, that we can see in museums, etc. Because uh, when uh, in com in commercial field, you require more uh, speed and qual quality, and uh, like uh, it should be uh, uh, with contact, and in general, it should be uh, complete. Uh, if we are talking about uh, emotional art, it's completely different. And I think that uh, AI can't create this uh, emotional uh, art as, uh, um, for example, um, I don't know, just uh, I think it can make only basic uh, automatic stuff, not uh, uh, something new. It can't create something new, but can, can make really good uh, um, basic stuff that uh, commercial fill it requires. See, I'm not so sure about that. Uh, I'm going to play, maybe I'll play a bit of a devil's advocate there, but uh, I started interact interacting with Midjourney from version one, and uh, now we are on version four. Uh, firstly, the speed at which it's advancing is truly astonishing, and the quality improvement is unbelievable. Uh, now, a bit of a misconception about AI-generated art is that it just mishmashes everything and just creates some output out there. Well, that's not exactly true. What it does, it does gather everything up in a bit of a mood board of its own, but it does create the final product based on what it sees. So what you see is, isn't, isn't just beat bits and pieces of uh, random artwork. It is technically speaking something original. It's just very directly inspired by what it sees. Now, um, uh, as I said before, uh, of course, I personally believe that uh, art does require a human element in it. But to um, go to, but firstly, to go beyond the uh, this argument that played a bit of a devil's advocate, um, a lot of the uh, uh, fields that require a lot of human imagination are technically built upon the experience of the generations game before that. Bill, you mentioned architecture. Well, what is architecture if not? a progressive field where uh, each generation builds upon the experience of the previous one. Uh, we still have the architectural styles uh, today, which come back from uh, millennia ago, take neoclassicism, right, which keeps advancing. But the ideas there are built upon the influence of the generations that came before. Now, I believe here it's a bit of a matter of interpreting of what, uh, how AI, what AI really does, if it just see, if it just, uh, um, uh, picks up the bits and pieces that have been uh, uh, imagined before and just simply uh, recreates it without really advancing the field or if it actually just duplicates the process that the humans uh, that the humans do and uh, 
this way will you know sort of inspire itself because what you, what you can really do is you can feed the ai the um, visuals that they create itself and that will also keep advancing the process and so on as i've done when i requested a, a mid journey to create some architectural designs true well the results are pretty impressive i gotta say so Sounds like, a, sounds like sounds like sounds like technological a, incest to me. Sounds like the the pool <laughs> of new input is sort of lacking eventually. And to me, it's a bit grim the idea that I mean, if we phase out all, I mean, this is not this is not a plane. I mean, I think AI should fly a plane because it's just better at performing that function. And there's no uh, there's no there's no artistic creation involved in it. I want to get from A to B. But I think the future of phasing out all architects and have one type of building through like a through AI. Um, that, that, that to me would like, look like a dystopian, uh, nightmare. Uh, and I don't think we want that. I mean, I, I, love I, the, I, I that, no. yeah, I love Eleanor's point though, that, you know, what art is about is about emotion and love. And it's about, you know, the, the kind of experience that we all have between family, friends, connections, beauty, what we're able to see in the world and the sort of philosopher, uh, Roger Scruton always made a very big point of you know, Western culture is kind of going away. It's become sort of too decadent and we're sort of in this this crazy reactive mode to where we're, we're allowing like super ugly buildings. You know, nobody appreciates good art anymore. It's all about these weird technological blocks. And I think that's that's always going to be the element that will set this apart. I think you guys are correct, though, on bringing up commercial art. Uh, but then again, you know, do we like to see all of our advertisements on well i guess not tv anymore but let's say advertisements on on youtube if you haven't gotten the brave browser and gotten rid of those ads uh but you know do we like to see everything that's animated or you know made in some computer factory or do we like to see actors because when we go to the movies you know as far as i understand we're not all just watching animated movies now right we're still watching live action things that require investment in cameras and actor trainings and then they have their mansions in hollywood hills and they have all of these inputs that go into that and that's because of not just some commercial equation but what we want to feel from art so i feel as if to, to match to elena's point is we're always going to need to have that human element and that is something that ai in a way would will never be able to provide so in a and way it, I, I we don't, don't need to be scared I mean yeah, and I don't think it's just it's just a translation yeah. of the feeling. Very, very briefly, Luca, it's not just a translation of the feeling. Yeah. I think it's also the fact that we know what went into it. I mean, it's the same reason that most of our cars right now are made by robots, mostly. Um, but people are willing to spend more on the Ferrari, not just because it is a great car, but because you know that somebody did this by hand and it's and it's it, it, this is not to sort of like try and be technologically regressive but because there's an appreciation in the fact that somebody had to do this the same reason that when i i, I love to send postcards i could technically send a picture with a text but unless somebody knows that i put the effort into it um to do it by hand and and there's sort of a there's sort of an appreciation of that in itself as well so i just wanted to bring that in i i, I think my point is still mm -hmm. important there but uh yeah sorry <laughs> sorry uh so uh, i think no, no. we need to go back to the history and remember industrial a revolution when everyone's uh, everything went to the machines everything was done with machines and uh, it was big uh, employment in this period uh, people were shocked what they need to do how they need to earn money and um but i want to say that uh, we have lots of stuff made by machines now and uh, but at the same time we really appreciate that something made by hand like handmade and it costs much more than just uh, machine stuff that was made quickly and it's just for commercial um for commercial reason it just should be uh, sold as much as, as as more as possible but still uh handmade stuff are cost much more and uh, we really we have it helps its own value because a person put uh, so much soul in it and you can feel it and it's nothing uh, for example even when we read like electronic book or real book we can feel it we can smell it it's something that you can't express and we when we read we just read information from laptop or from ipad doesn't matter so i think it's really important uh, yeah something handmade look 
I mean, uh, I'm going to play a bit of a devil's advocate again here. Uh, uh, emotion was mentioned, and surely, of course, uh, the creation of art itself requires a human, uh, human emotional input in it. However, uh, there's also the other side of the of art itself, which is evoking emotion from the art as an observer. And uh, I do believe that if you view an AI generated art, you will still be able to evoke an emotion out of that as a viewer, especially if, you, if, I'm never, if you're never really going to be told if the art is generated by AI or as a human. Uh, why? Because, well, um, <clears throat> um, uh, but because um, we uh, uh, we as uh, individuals have the ability to make uh, to give our own interpretation to the sea, and uh, with the level of sophistication of the uh, of the art generated by AI, uh, I believe that um, we do have the uh, uh, we will reach an, a point where the differentiation between. Um, uh, something that's generated by the human or the or, or the or the uh, AI will uh, not really provide uh, will, will will be much harder to differentiate between the, the, those two, especially from the viewer's perspective. And I don't think that we should just ignore the um, uh, viewer side of things here uh, as such. Now, um, sorry. Uh, uh, All right. So then, let's yeah, sorry, um, if if we look at you know what can kind of be done. So. One of the major companies that is doing this, and I emphasize company, is uh, openai.com. So they have uh, created the DAL-E bot. Um, you also mentioned MidJourney, Luca, and um, OpenAI is doing many different things. Um, also a company founded by Elon Musk. He's always got a connection. And uh, we have all of the different chat applications as well that are coming around for text and writing. So in the meantime, what can kind of be done? Because, you know, I don't know if it's an awareness campaign or understanding. I'm a bit more sympathetic now to this position in that we have to have a better way to source this. And, you know, we're all people are really just looking for that output of that beautiful image that they can put on a podcast cover or a cover of a new book or something like that. And their attribution is going to say, you know, hey, mid journey AI bot. It's not going to be um, Elena's um, water painting of the mockingbird in the Georgian forest or something like this, right? So what, what can kind of be done? Are there any practical tools? Or do you think this is not a technological answer that we can have or formulate? Um, and unfortunately, it will have to be something that is later found by courts or, God forbid, politicians. <laughs> I want to jump on that actually because well that sounds like a depressing outlook if we if we if we think that you know politicians will get into this which is why I think it's important that we have these conversations right now. Um, I think a lot of people need to like we need we need to think about this before somebody in the committee on culture at the European Parliament is going to try and address this because then it's going to be really bad because then it's going to be the option between we're either going to ban this which I don't think is. It's, 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 it's going to be good because uh, the, the ramifications of that are going to be massive um, or it's going to be a, a 1,500 page uh, directive that you can only be an artist in the future if you have a legal uh, uh, firm uh, on standby to to help you out and I don't think that's 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 good for art either so I um, um, somebody needs to come up with a creative way of doing this because I don't think we can um you know, I don't think we can continue in the sort of free for all that it is right now. There's there's got to be some rules, and it's the question is like who establishes those rules. Um, I think to some extent, I see the artists on Twitter um, that you know are, are displaying uh, to what extent, you know, give examples to what extent their work has been has been used by AI generated art, where you see the very strong similarities and and. And and I and I think that you know what they say is just you know don't use these tools. But ultimately, I mean the the average Twitter user, whether they use or not use that, is not going to be necessarily relevant for that industry, as 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 Luca says, you know, in the commercial space. But I mean, I, it makes me think when when Luca talks about sort of the, the commercial use of that, um, these these ads I sometimes get on social media platforms, these very easy same music kind of like 
use this international money transfer thing. I mean, I couldn't think of a less appealing ad than those things. So ultimately, I think maybe it's even just a success of this where people are eventually tired of it. Like, okay, yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, you made it cool. You you, you pressed uh, some buttons on the computer. Now you made something. Eh, I don't care. Um, maybe that's what it's going to be. Uh, so maybe that technology really needs to evolve a lot more to really wow us. And ultimately, it's maybe not even a threat uh, to to artists. Um, I'm open to that possibility. I'm, I just think that we need to come up with, uh, you know, good answers before the politicians get on it in, uh, well, I mean, in their speed, maybe like two years. Guardrails, Bill, guardrails. At best. And I, I think there was some uh-huh. utility, and please don't kill me here, I think there was some utility in the nominal notion of, of NFT that there is some kind of digital certificate or signature that is attached to something that can be put in a database, can be searched, can be um, scraped for future purpose so that you can see that. I mean, they do a very good job with photography. You know, if you use, um, mostly because they use the political system or the legal system. Um, I think anybody who's in media at some point has gotten uh, some kind of letter from a lawyer about uh, a picture that somehow ended up on your blog or your website at some point, and they hire the lawyers and they send you a threatening letter to either take it down or pay a fee. Uh, is that something that the artists are going to have to do now? They're going to have to hire up these uh, legal firms to go after the uh, people who are using the AI-generated art? I don't know. I, knowing the lawyers, I'm pretty sure that's already existing at this point. <laughs> it's already there. I represent the estate of Claude Monet, and I demand <laughs> you would delete this from your server. Uh, yeah, that's going to that's gonna be bad. Well, in terms of, you know, Different parts of the debate, I think you guys have, have covered a good ground into what the ethical issues are. Uh, some of the legal issues will be, I guess, understood later. But, but certainly when it comes to the emotive parts of this, and to what purpose. And I think even with the generation of uh, mid-jury and all these other things, there's an expectation that you're not going to be using this for commercial purpose as far as I know in the beginning. You know, you can't just like go up and start setting this around and charging 300 euros a pop. Uh, for something that you just generated uh so that's why a lot of the stuff that let's say i'm using it for is is not really for any commercial purpose it's to put it in an article or blog or use that as as some kind of typeface but i i think it it is going to have to come down to perhaps another company because these are just the first actors right and um i think lucas mentioned this is like what round four of the different ai generated art So there's going to be all types of different ones that might come up and might offer a different model. So then it's just about, you know, are we we going to have a Google of AI generated art or are there going to be, you know, 10 separate companies competing in order to have access to all the different consumers and clients out there? And perhaps one of them will be, hey, we're the ethical AR, AI art generator. And perhaps consumers can kind of vote with their feet or vote with their wallet uh, to figure out which one will be the best one. There's your optimistic note. Let's hope. That, Extremely yeah. simple. <laughs> All right. Well, this has been great. Um, cool. I guess um, if anybody has any closing thoughts, we can kind of get into that. If, if you think uh, some points were not addressed, um, speak now or forever hold your peace. I think there is a lot more to discuss, but um, uh, because of the time limitations I think it's not kind of possible to say everything um, but yeah I think we we touched the major topics that has to be said oh you know Gogi we can so, still give so, this to AI generated podcasting and that and that, exactly. that, that, that generator can continue the podcast <laughs> uh, uh, for us it can be infinitely long okay It'll be a nice Joe Rogan conversation on AR. Okay, good. Very right, cool. Well, I, I want to thank everybody for taking their time. Hopefully the uh, audience enjoyed our little um, tete-a-tete-a-tete-a-tete back and forth uh, about all of this really technological innovation happening before our eyes and the different ethical questions, artistic questions uh, before us. So uh, if you guys want to uh, follow up on more, we'll uh, link to some of the uh, the social profiles and you guys can see the great art put together by some of our uh, graphic designers and design heads and creative minds at the Consumer Choice Center. So I have to thank uh, you, Elena, you, Gogi, and you, Luca. And um, I guess, Bill, you have a little bit of creativity. So uh, 
Thank you guys all for participating in the conversation. Thanks, Thank you. Yeah. Bye, Thank guys. you for inviting me. <laughs>